Hello student, in today's session, I will be solving NEAT question paper of the year 2013. So let's start with the first question. Select the wrong statement. Option number A, isogametes are similar in structure, function and behavior. Option number B, and isogametes differ either in structure, function or behavior. Option number C, in oomycetes, female gamete is smaller and motile while male gamete is larger and non-motile. Option number D, Chlamydomonas exhibits both isogamy and anisogamy and fucus show oogamy. Student, this question is from the chapter Sexual Reproduction in Flowering Plant. So what we have to do? We have to select the wrong statement. So out of these four option, which one is the wrong statement? Let's find out. In option number A, you can see isogametes are similar in structure, function and behavior. That is the correct statement. Now option number B, an isogametes differ either in structure, function and behavior. That is also a correct statement. Now in option number C, it is written that in oomycetes, the female gamete is smaller and motile, whereas the male gamete is larger and non-motile. That is the incorrect statement. Because in oomycetes, the female gamete is larger and non-motile, while male gamete is smaller and they are motile. Now see the next option, that is option number D. Chlamydomonas exhibits both isogamy and anisogamy, whereas fucus show oogamy. That is the correct statement. So out of these four options, the incorrect statement is in option number C. So option number C is the correct answer for this question. Now let's see the next question that is question number 2. Now in this question you can see which one of the following is not a correct statement. Option number A, herbarium houses dried, pressed and preserved plant specimen. Option number B, botanical gardens have a collection of living plants for reference. Option number C, a museum has a collection of photographs of plant and animals and option number D key is a taxonomic aid for the identification of specimen. So student this is from the chapter the living world. What we have to select? We have to select the incorrect statement. So out of these options what is the incorrect statement? Let's check this. In the first option it is written herbarium houses dried pressed and preserved plant specimen. That is a correct statement. Now option number B, botanical gardens have a collection of living plants for reference. That is also a correct statement. Now in option number C, it is written that a museum has a collection of photographs of plant and specimens. Is this a correct statement? Well, no. This is an incorrect statement. Whereas the last option that is key is a taxonomic aid for the identification of specimen. That is also a correct statement. So out of these four option, option number C is the correct answer for this question. Now let's see the next question, that is question number 3. Now in the next question you can see, isogamous condition with non-flagellated gamete is found in option number A, Chlamydomonas, option number B, Spirogyra, option number C, Volvox, option number D, Fucus. Student, this is from class 12, chapter 2, that is, sexual reproduction in flowering plants. So isogamous condition with non-flagellated gamete is found in which of the following is the correct answer? Option number B that is Spirogyra. So Spirogyra is an example in which the isogamous condition with non-flagellated gametes. So this is the correct answer. Now let's move on to the next question that is question number 4. Now, in question number 4, you can see, besides pedifil, cyanobacteria are also found inside vegetative part of option number A, pinus, option number B, cycus, option number C, equisitum, option number D, xylotum. This is from the chapter plant kingdom. So, out of these four options, what is the correct answer? That is option number B, cycus. So it is written that beside the paddy fields and the cyanobacteria that is the blue green algae are also found inside the vegetative part of cycus. Cycus they have the coralloid roots which can fix atmospheric nitrogen right. 
So, that is the correct answer for this question. Now, the next question is question number 5. Megasporangium is equivalent to option number A, embryo sac, option number B, fruit, option number C, nucleus and option number D, ovule. Student, this is from the chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plant. So, megasporangium is equivalent to what? It is equivalent to ovule. So, option number D is the correct answer for this question. Now, let us see the next question that is question number 6. Now, I will start with question number 6. Read the following statement A to E and answer the questions which follows them. Statement number A in liver words, mosses and ferns, gametophytes are free living. Statement number B, gymnosperm and some ferns are heterosporous. Statement number C, sexual reproduction in fucus, volvox and albugo is oogamous. Statement number D, the sporophyte in liverwort is more elaborate than that in mosses. Statement number E, both pinus and marchensia are dioecious. How many of the above statements are correct? Option number A, 1, option number B, 2, option number C, 3 and option number D, 4. Student, this is from the chapter Plant Kingdom. So, out of these 4 statement, we have to tick the correct statement. Let us find out. Statement number A, it is written that in liver words, mosses and ferns, gametophytes are free living. This is the correct statement. In the next statement, it is written, Gymnosperms and some ferns are heterosporous. That is also a correct statement. Next, in statement number C, it is written that sexual reproduction in fucus, volvox and albugo is oogamous. That is also a correct statement. Now, in statement number D, it is written that the sporophyte in liverwort is more elaborate than that in mosses. That is the incorrect statement because the correct statement is the sporophyte in mosses is more elaborate than that in liverworts. Now, in the statement number E, it is written both pinus and marchensia are dioecious, whereas the correct statement will be pinus is monoecious, where marchensia is dioecious. So, out of this five statement, statement number D and E is the incorrect statement, and this A, B, and C are the correct statement. So, from this four option, what is the correct answer? That is the option number C. So, from this five statement, three statements are the correct statement. Now, let us move on to the next question that is question number seven. Now, question number seven is among bitter gourd, mustard, brinchel, pumpkin, china rose, lupin, cucumber, sun ham, gram, guava, bean, chili, plum, petunia, tomato, rose, withania, then potato, onion, aloe vera and tulip, how many plants have hypogynous flower? Student from the chapter morphology of flowering plants, we have got the information about hypogynous flower which means the superior flower. So, we have to select the one which is hypogynous flower. So, among these examples which are given in the questions, what are the correct answer? You see, Mustard is not the hypogynous flower. So, brinchel, china rose, lupin, sun ham, then gram, bean, chili, petunia, tomato, withania, potato, onion, aloe vera and tulip. These are all example of hypogynous flower. So, these are the options which are given in the questions. Four options are given. So, what is the correct answer? So, the total number of examples that are given in this question is 15. So, 15 is the correct answer for this question. That means option number C. Now, let us see the next question that is question number 8. Now, in question number 8 you can see interfascicular cambium develops from the cells of option number A medullary rays, option number B xylem parenchyma, option number C endodermis, option number D pericycle. Student, this is from the chapter Anatomy of Flowering Plants. So, what is the correct answer of this question? That is option number A, medullary rays. So, interfascicular cambium develops from the cells of medullary rays. This is the correct answer. 
Now let's move on to the next question that is question number 9. Now in question number 9 you can see in China rose the flowers are option number A actinomorphic hypogynous with twisted estivation option number B actinomorphic epigynous with velvet estivation option number C zygomorphic hypogynous with imbricate estivation option number D zygomorphic with epigynous and with twisted estivation. Student from the chapter morphology of flowering plant we have got the information about all these terms actinomorphic which means the radial symmetry whereas the zygomorphic which means the bilateral symmetry. So we have to select the one which matches with the china rose flowers. So what is the correct answer among these four options? The correct answer is option number A that is china rose are actinomorphic hypogynous which means superior and they have twisted estivation. Now let's move on to the next question that is question number 10. Now question number 10. Lenticels are involved in option number A transpiration, option number B gaseous exchange, option number C food transport, option number D photosynthesis. From the chapter anatomy of flowering plant we have got what is lenticels. So among these four options what is the correct answer that is gaseous exchange that is in the option number B. So lenticels are involved in gaseous exchange. So this is the correct answer. Now let's move on to the next question that is question number 11. Now question number 11 age of a tree can be estimated by option number A its height and girth, option number B biomass, option number C number of annual rings, option number D diameter of its hardwood. Student this is from the chapter anatomy of flowering plant. So what is the correct answer among this? How can you estimate the age of a tree? So option number C is the correct answer that is the number of annual rings. Annual rings that is while you cut a tree trunk if you count this number of this concentric rings then you can estimate the age of a tree. So option C is the correct answer for this question. Now let's see the next question that is question number 12. Now the next question is seed coat is not thin membranous in option number A maize option number B coconut, option number C groundnut, option number D gram. This is a very easy question student. So what is the correct answer? Among these four options, option number A, B and D, they are all having seed coat with thin and membranous layer. Whereas in the option number B, you can see that coconut, coconut have a thick seed coat. They have thick seed coat. So that is the correct answer. So option number B is the correct answer for question number 12. Now let's move on to the next question that is question number 13. Now question number 13 transition state structure of the substrate formed during an enzymatic reaction is option number A transient but stable, option number B permanent but unstable, option number C transient but unstable and option number D permanent and stable. This is from the chapter biomolecule. So what is the correct answer? That is option number C which is transient but unstable. So option number C is the correct answer for question number 13. Now let's move on to the next question that is question number 14. Now the next question is a phosphoglyceride is always made up of Option number A, only a saturated fatty acid esterified with a glycerol molecule to which a phosphate group is also attached. Option number B, only an unsaturated fatty acid esterified with a glycerol molecule to which a phosphate group is too attached. And option number C, a saturated or unsaturated fatty acid esterified to a glycerol molecule to which a phosphate group is also attached. And option number D, a saturated or unsaturated fatty acid esterified to a phosphate group which is also attached to a glycerol molecule. This is a very easy question student and it has come from the chapter biomolecules. So what is the correct answer? That is option number C. That means the phosphoglyceride is always made up of a saturated or unsaturated fatty acid 
esterified with a glycerol molecule to which a phosphate group is also attached. So that is the correct answer. Now let's move on to the next question that is question number 15. Now the next question is pigment containing membranous extension in some cyanobacteria are option number A heterocyst, option number B basal bodies, option number C pneumatophores, option number D chromatophores. This is from the chapter biological classification of class 11 chapter number 2. So what is the correct answer? That is in the option number D chromatophores. So chromatophores is the correct answer which means the pigment containing membranous extension in some cyanobacteria are chromatophores. So that is the correct answer. Now let's move on to the next question that is question number 16. Now the next question is question number 16. A major site for synthesis of lipid is option number A RER, option number B SER, option number C Simplast, option number D Nucleoplasm. Student this is from the chapter cell the unit of life. So what is the correct answer? So it is given here that in option number A RER which means rough endoplasmic reticulum. Option number B it is given SER which means smooth endoplasmic reticulum and option number C is simplast and option number D is nucleoplasm. So what is the correct answer? Where the synthesis of lipid take place? It take place in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum which is given in option number B. So option B is the correct answer for question number 16. Now let's move on to the next question that is question number 17. Now in question number 17 you can see the complex formed by a pair of synapsed homologous chromosome is called option number A equatorial plate, option number B nitecore, option number C bivalent, option number D exoneme. Student from the chapter cell cycle and cell division we have discussed about the homologous chromosome. So what is the correct answer among this? That is given in the option number C bivalent. So option number C is written bivalent. It is the complex which is formed by pair of synapsed homologous chromosomes. Alright. Now let's move on to the next question that is question number 18. Now in this question you can see the three boxes in this diagram represent the three major biosynthetic pathways in aerobic respiration. Arrows represent net reactants or product. Arrows number 4, 8 and 12 can all be options are given here NADH, option B ATP, option number C H2O, option number D FAD or FADH2. So what is the correct answer? You can see in this figure it is given pathway, path B and path C. So what is path A? Pathway will be glycolysis. So pathway A is the glycolysis. Whereas path B that is pathway B is the Krebs cycle and pathway C is the oxidative phosphorylation. So that is the correct answer and we have already discussed about this in the chapter respiration in plants. So what is the correct answer among this four option? That is option number B ATP that means adenosine triphosphate. So option B is the correct answer for the question number 18. Now let's see the next question that is question number 19. Now in this next question you can see the most abundant intracellular cation is option number A sodium, option number B calcium, option number C hydrogen, option number D potassium. So what is the correct answer? That is option number D potassium. So potassium is the most abundant intracellular cation whereas option number A that is sodium is the extracellular cation. So this is the correct answer. Now let's move on to the next question that is question number 20. Now in question number 20 you can see during seed germination its stored food is mobilized by option number A ethylene, option number B cytokinin, option number C abiscus acid, option number D gibberellin. This is from the chapter mineral nutrition. So what is the correct answer? 
So during seed germination, its stored food is mobilized by option number D that is gibberellin. So gibberellin is the correct answer for this question. Now let's move on to the next question that is question number 21. Now in this question you can see which of the following criterion does not pertain to facilitated transport. Option number A requirement of spatial membrane proteins. Option number B high selectivity. Option number C transport saturation. Option number D uphill transport. Student this question is from the chapter transport in plants. So what is the correct answer? That is option number D uphill transport. So uphill transport is the correct answer for this question. Now let's see the next question that is question number 22. Now in this question you can see the first stable product of fixation of atmospheric nitrogen leguminous plant is option number A nitrite, option number B ammonia, option number C nitrate, option number D glutamate. This is from the chapter mineral nutrition. So what is the correct answer? That is option number B ammonia. So option number B is the correct answer for this question. Now let's move on to the next question that is question number 23. Now in this question you can see which of the metabolites is common to respiration mediated breakdown of fats, carbohydrates and proteins. Option number A glucose 6 phosphate, option number B fructose 1 6 biphosphate, option number C pyruvic acid, option number D acetyl coenzyme A. Student this is from class 11 chapter respiration in plant. So what is the correct answer? Which of the following is the metabolites which is common to respiration mediated breakdown of fats, carbohydrate and proteins? That is acetyl coenzyme A that is given in option number D. So option number D is the correct answer for this question. Mm -hmm.